Okay, welcome back. Uh, my name is Jay Oza. This is Speech Talk uh, Live, uh, episode number 26. So, one of the things we do starting out this uh, program is uh, to do a, th I call it a three minute segment. And the purpose of this is to pick any topic uh, that we're interested in and just kind of talk about it for three minutes. It's something that you get to practice because, let's face it, if you speak more than three minutes, then you're going to be a bore. And you should be able to encapsulate everything in three minutes. Now, if you want to be, in my case, I tend to go over three minutes and somehow that happens because when you're not prepared, you tend to say a lot and you tend to repeat a lot. Now, that's okay here, but uh, somebody was trying to reach me. I have no idea why. Somebody named Wendy Ishak. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so I think I, I, I lost my talk there. This happens all the time. Anyway. So one of the things uh, is to just give a you know three minute uh, talk. So I'll go first, and I want to talk about coaching. And I learned a very important lesson last week, and it's a personal story, and it has to do with my son. Uh, his name is Hirsch, and he plays uh, trumpet. Now, this is a could be a, a big topic, but I learned the the value of coaching. And you know, we anything where we want to become good at it. I'm firmly convinced that you really need to find a good coach. And I, something that this came up in one of the speeches that we had reviewed. It was given by, uh, I think his name was uh, Cook, right? Not Scott, uh, not the guy from. Uh, I think it's Scott Cook, right? Uh, he was uh, the founder of Intuit, and he talked about. He was giving a speech at the Harvard Business. Uh, uh, commencement and he one of the things he recommended advice he gave to the student body was the, the graduates was that have a coach the importance of a coach he has a coach and all the people that are CEOs that are successful have a coach and I didn't really didn't think much of it but then I just recently saw that my son started playing trumpet from fourth grade and I initially the coach that he had was a, a woman named Sarah and she was excellent uh, th that coach kind of developed a habit in my son that you know he had to go every week to take his lessons and then he, he got to I put him in this uh, rock band camp and he had to they have a performance uh, at the end of the year so he got that experience of what it's like performing and being in a rock band camp and put a music together in one week and perform in front of parents because so, that was good but then after he finished sixth grade, I moved him to another coach because I wanted to make sure that is he really serious to take it to the next level. And I got him an excellent coach. His name is John. And John has got, uh, he's an elderly gentleman. He's got a lot of experience teaching Trump, but he's also a teacher. And to make the story short, uh, so he's been going to John for the, since, uh, since he started uh, seventh grade. He's in eighth grade now. And over the summer, John... It, it, you know, had a word with me saying he encouraged me to have her try out for this uh, audition, they call it, for the All, all Shore uh, Intermediate Band for middle schoolers. I had never even given much thought to this because, you know, I didn't really know whether my son was that good. I said, okay, I just want him to learn to play trumpet so that it would be a social thing. He could join the marching band and play in the concert band and develop friendships that way for people who are focused on you know, doing something. And when he mentioned that, I said, he said, look, Hirsch is good, but he'll need a little work, and I'm pretty sure that uh, even if he doesn't make it, it'll be a good experience for him to do it. Well, to make the story uh, short again, last Saturday he had his audition, and I found out later that evening that, that my son did make the All Shore Intermediate Band. And afterwards, I was having a conversation with my a son, I said, listen, in life you just learn a very important lesson whether you know it or not, but let me just tell you what I learned. That if you want to be successful, you need three things. Maybe there are more, but three things I can come up with. One is you need a good support system, and you have that in your parents, your sister, and your relatives. Second is you need a good coach who's going to guide you through the process, and he will he has a trust in you, and you follow his system and if you know that in the past he's had successes, then you know the system works. You just have to follow it faithfully. And third is you have to be motivated and be committed to it. 
And I think if you do that, even if you don't make it, at least your system is right. Sometimes you don't always get what you want, but at least you are you did everything right. And you know, in his case, the third part is a little weak. He's sometimes not that motivated, and that's the part I said you need to work on. So I gave him my little advice. Hopefully that works. I said this applies to everything in academics or anything you going to try in the future. So I said, you now know how to be successful. You don't need to be taught over and over, over again what it takes to be successful. I hope you learn from this and use it uh, as you get older. So coaching is very important. It's one big part of that besides the support and your own motivation. Coach can really streamline the process that's required for you to get to that next level and succeed. OK, that's my Three minutes, probably went over, but hey, that's how it goes. Uh, Julie, you want to go next? Thanks, Jay. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate your discussion on coaching. Um, so I'm kind of working along that same idea of success, and I find that um, many of us sometime in life who want to do a business or even a project or initiative and um, when I was doing that in my uh, career I wanted to start my own business and I had to do a business plan. Now business plans are great but what I found is that um, it's, it's not always the right place to start. And I, I kind of think like so I create, you know, because I was in systems, I created this thing I'm calling it the success life cycle or the development uh, developmental stages of success. Um, it starts with uh, four major stages, but they are not linear. They're not like a ladder that you climb up. Uh, they're more like a hurricane, you know. There's always like something um, that's like in the heart of it but everything always circles and everything moves. So the first thing in this life cycle of success is meet, meeting people where they are at. This, this is supposed to help you wherever you are at. And the second thing is you have to keep at it, which is what you talk about. Uh, so the four stages for me, uh, the first one is vision. It's just having a desire. It could be very well-defined vision or very uh, if it is uh, vision like I have a God I I know I want to do something with my life and the process will help to do that the second stage is I think what is missing is before the um, business plan and should input into the business plan and that I'm calling it experimentation and looking for opportunities so you may have an idea for example you um, I want to just do the success thing there's so many people doing it already, so I have to keep trying different things to see what I, what's attractive to people, what works, what people get, and if I want it to be a business, what the business opportunities are. So it's experimenting and seeking opportunities. Out of that, you have something that's maybe doable, and you go through a proof of concept or the pilot stage where you take a small model of your concept that's laid out and you have a business plan at that point but you do it at a granular level, at a small level. So that's the third stage, proof of concept. And the third one is that the scale, scale up to the scope you want and maybe incremental but it is a, a life-size project, whatever it is and you have maybe stages but it's not longer a model phase. And the fourth one is of course maintenance. And we know that in IT, 80% of the IT budget is in the maintenance. So there's only 20% left to do those other four stages. But it's like a seed. A seed can be very small, but it's necessary to germinate a new plant. So my success life cycle is having a gut feeling or vision, experimenting and finding opportunities, do a proof of concept or pilot, scale up to project level, and then maintaining the effort and refinement. So those are my four stages. People can start wherever they're at, but if they show up 
and they meet this process, it will continue to grow. So I, I agree with you that the my, my speech is finished. So as a, a linking it into your idea of coaching, I think that having a coach is really important. But more important is to finding like-minded people who are committed to this process. And we can actually coach each other and grow together. And that is what Napoleon Hill devised as uh, the mastermind project, where a group of people come together, make a commitment to show up, to discuss, and to support each other. So that is part of the reason why I want to do the Wednesday evening. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm calling it. Right now I have masterminding success. So, okay, that's my speech. Thank you. Yeah, that's 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 very good. Uh, and and this, <clears throat> what you just uh, described, applies to just about anything, right? It's uh, yes. It, it applies to yeah, because I'm going to be using some of this. Uh, I kind of discussed that uh, because I consider a speech as a product. Uh, okay, uh, Atul, you're next. Hi, this is nice uh, speech, uh, Julie and Jay. That's yeah. a good input. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, what I wanted to talk today about is that uh, last week I was browsing through Indian channels and there was this thing that controversy that is going on about what Amir Khan has said on the intolerance issue that is going in India. So, um, I uh, so after uh, um, browsing through a channel, everywhere the message was about uh, what Amir Khan had said that he wanted. Uh, so Amir Khan is basically a very well-known actor in India and currently what is happening, a little background about intolerance issue is that the current government that is in India is a BJP which has its roots in uh, uh, from RSS which is a Hindu uh, 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 group. Uh, so what is happening here is that there are some, some incidents that, went, uh, that happened in India and where the People think that you know the government has not taken enough steps to um, to fight uh, against like uh, some issues that happened. Uh, so it started with people like uh, writers and all returning their uh, awards uh, as a as a part of showing their intolerance uh, uh, position. So Amir Khan uh, recently made a comment that you know, on a show where you know he said that. His wife is a little bit concerned about raising kids in India when there is this such a kind of environment. And what media is trying to do, you know, like what I realized that uh, he was just talking out his mind. He had some concerns and he was just raising and that was also that he didn't say it. He was just mentioning that what his wife uh, had concern. But what media portrayed was everything that, you know, oh, he wants to... No, he doesn't feel secure and he wants to leave country and all those totally crap thing where um, uh, just portraying anything uh, totally opposite and this has created kind of you know like huge uh, whatsapp messages facebook videos a lot of people commenting on this one and you know kind of viral kind of thing that's uh, that's hap that's happening uh, right now and i'm little concerned here uh, because you know what if you go and watch the video, what uh, people are commenting about, like it's, I feel that he just wanted, he was very uh, formal and he he was, you know, he just wanted to let it out to know like what's what his current state of mind was, and that was uh, that was pretty fine. Uh, but people or media just, you know, it it blown that issue into a, something very big, and you know, every uh, uh, and every uh, uh, everybody in India is like you know talking this, so uh, talking this issue. Uh, the thing that uh, you know, you know, being a, like you know learned person or educated person, we know that media is all about getting those TRP ratings out. And I'm really concerned about why people are sharing all those news, why people are commenting, why tweeting about, and making it kind of you know making it the topic a trending topic. And then all media does is then you know having this lot of panel discussions about oh they, he said this and then what do you feel about and you know just getting the the entire few days we've been just uh, hearing about the same topic 
I am pretty sure that you know people have very good topic to discuss about about development, about education, about technology in India. But what focus is now media is giving is just about you know things that are really doesn't matter. Right now, where India needs is like you know growing towards technology, finding new ways, entrepreneurship, all these things which are you know uh, making country move forward. But what right now we are discussing is all those issues where you know it's all media is trying to create a hype and you know putting all people focus in topics which are not relevant or not that concerning uh, now and uh, yeah so it's it was kind of for me whenever i switch those channels the news channels in india all i'm seeing is this news so i was little concerned um, yeah that's that's my yeah, All right, Atul, that was good. Uh, just a few comments on that. <clears throat> yeah, I I haven't really been following that because, uh, as you mentioned, that this is what's happening nowadays with uh, with with social media and uh, media in general that they can take something minor and blow it out of proportion, and that's the world we're living in. And like it or not, that's what happens. You know, you get all the positives with social media. You also get to live with the negatives too. And here's an example of uh, uh, what you're mentioning is uh, India learning that social media works both ways. That when you say something, it can be used and turn it into something that's much bigger. So what, what that means is that when you, whenever somebody's famous, they have to be very careful what they say, in, whether it's in, on social media or in media, because today, nothing is private everything you do is public even if it's an offhanded comment that you think there's nobody listening as somebody's picking it up with a cell phone and it can go viral um, so something to point out that you're probably familiar with it uh, if you remember in the last election uh, somebody had uh, taped Mitt Romney when he was giving a speech where he said that there are 47 percent that are never going to vote for me because of the, the, the government, they're getting all this stuff from the government. And uh, he didn't want that out. If, he had, if it was up to him, he would not have wanted other people to see that. That was a speech he was giving to his supporters. But somebody taped it and uh, on an iPhone, and then it went viral. And I believe that one video pretty much hurt his chances of getting... Uh, we don't know whether that would have helped but it created a narrative that was very difficult for him to overcome that he didn't care about uh, you know the, the poor people or the middle class people who were dependent on the government for some reason it made him look like he only cared about the rich so yeah so the point you're making is uh, is very important and the best thing that i would say is that just ignore it it'll go over something else will replace it soon all right so those are excellent uh, excellent speeches and now we can move to our first segment. I'm going to take a brief pause. <laughs> 